Androgen Insensitivity Syndrome, Wikipedia Article Audio Androgen Insensitivity Syndrome is an intersex condition in which there is a partial or complete inability of many cells in the affected genetic male to respond to androgenic hormones. This can prevent or impair the masculinization of male genitalia in the developing genetic male fetus, as well as the development of male secondary sexual characteristics at puberty. Clinical phenotypes range from a normal male habitus with mild spermatogenic defect or reduced secondary terminal hair, to a full female habitus despite the presence of a Y chromosome. Women who are heterozygous for the AR gene have normal primary and secondary sexual characteristics, this female carrier will pass the affected AR gene to any child she has with 50% likelihood. ACE is the largest single entity that leads to 46XY undermasculinized genitalia. The androgen receptor, which is defective due to a mutation in most of these syndromes, is a type of nuclear receptor that is activated by binding to either of the androgenic hormones in the cytoplasm, and then translocates into the nucleus where it binds to DNA provided androgen response elements and coactivators are present. This combination functions as a transcription complex to turn on androgen gene expression. Thus the AR activates these genes to mediate the effects of androgens in the human body, including the development and maintenance of the male sexual phenotype and generalized anabolic effects. Over 400 AR mutations have been reported. Categories Complete ACE ACE is divided into three categories that are differentiated by the degree of genital masculinization. Complete androgen insensitivity syndrome is indicated when the external genitalia are that of a normal female. Mild androgen insensitivity syndrome is indicated when the external genitalia are that of a normal male and partial androgen insensitivity syndrome is indicated when the external genitalia are partially, but not fully, masculinized. Management of ACE is currently limited to symptomatic management, no method is currently available to correct the malfunctioning androgen receptor proteins produced by AR gene mutations. Areas of management include sex assignment, genitoplasty, gonadectomy in relation to tumor risk, hormone replacement therapy, genetic counseling, and psychological counseling. ACE is broken down into three classes based on phenotype, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, partial androgen insensitivity syndrome, and mild androgen insensitivity syndrome. A supplemental system of phenotypic grading that uses seven classes instead of the traditional three was proposed by pediatric endocrinologist Charmian A. Quigley ETAL in 1995. The first six grades of the scale, grades 1 through 6, are differentiated by the degree of genital masculinization, grade 1 is indicated when the external genitalia is fully masculinized. Grade 6 is indicated when the external genitalia is fully feminized, and grades 2 through 5 quantify 4 degrees of decreasingly masculinized genitalia that lie in the interim. Grade 7 is indistinguishable from grade 6 until puberty, and is thereafter differentiated by the presence of secondary terminal hair. Grade 6 is indicated when secondary terminal hair is present whereas grade 7 is indicated when it is absent. The Quigley scale can be used in conjunction with the traditional three classes of ACE to provide additional information regarding the degree of genital masculinization, and is particularly useful when the diagnosis is PACE. The human androgen receptor is a protein encoded by a gene located on the proximal long arm of the X chromosome. The protein coding region consists of approximately 2,757 nucleotides spanning eight exons, designated 1 to 8 or AH. 
Introns vary in size between 0.7 and 26 kb. Like other nuclear receptors, the AR protein consists of several functional domains, the transactivation domain, the DNA binding domain, the hinge region, and the steroid binding domain. The transactivation domain is encoded by exon 1, and makes up more than half of the AR protein. Exons 2 and 3 encode the DNA binding domain, while the 5 portion of exon 4 encodes the hinge region. The remainder of exons 4 through 8 encodes the ligand binding domain. The AR gene contains two polymorphic trinucleotide microsatellites in exon 1. The first microsatellite contains 8 to 60 repetitions of the glutamine codon CAG and is thus known as the polyglutamine tract. The second microsatellite contains 4 to 31 repetitions of the glycine codon GGC and is known as the polyglycine tract. The average number of repetitions varies by ethnicity, with Caucasians exhibiting an average of 21 CAG repeats and blacks 18. In men, disease states are associated with extremes in polyglutamine tract length, prostate cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, and intellectual disability are associated with too few repetitions, while spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy is associated with a CAG repetition length of 40 or more. Some studies indicate that the length of the polyglutamine tract is inversely correlated with transcriptional activity in the AR protein, and that longer polyglutamine tracts may be associated with male infertility and undermasculinized genitalia in men. However, other studies have indicated no such correlation exists. A comprehensive meta-analysis of the subject published in 2007 supports the existence of the correlation, and concluded these discrepancies could be resolved when sample size and study design are taken into account. Some studies suggest longer polyglycine tract lengths are also associated with genital masculinization defects in men. Other studies find no such association. Partial ACE As of 2010, over 400 AR mutations have been reported in the AR mutation database, and the number continues to grow. Inheritance is typically maternal and follows an X-linked recessive pattern. Individuals with a 46XY karyotype always express the mutant gene since they have only one X chromosome whereas 46XX carriers are minimally affected. About 30% of the time, the AR mutation is a spontaneous result, and is not inherited. Such de novo mutations are the result of a germ cell mutation or germ cell mosaicism in the gonads of one of the parents, or a mutation in the fertilized egg itself. In one study, Three of eight de novo mutations occurred in the postzygotic stage, leading to the estimate that up to one third of de novo mutations result in somatic mosaicism. Not every mutation of the AR gene results in androgen insensitivity, one particular mutation occurs in 8 to 14 percent of genetic males, and is thought to adversely affect only a small number of individuals when other genetic factors are present. Some individuals with CAIS or PAIS do not have any AR mutations despite clinical, hormonal, and histological features sufficient to warrant an ACE diagnosis. Up to 5% of women with CAIS do not have an AR mutation, as well as between 27 and 72% of individuals with PAIS. Mild ACE In one patient, the underlying cause for presumptive PAIS was a mutant steroidogenic factor 1 protein. In another patient, CAIS was the result of a deficit in the transmission of a transactivating signal from the N-terminal region of the normal androgen receptor to the basal transcription machinery of the cell. 
a coactivator protein interacting with the activation function 1 transactivation domain of the androgen receptor may have been deficient in this patient. The signal disruption could not be corrected by supplementation with any coactivators known at the time, nor was the absent coactivator protein characterized which left some in the field unconvinced that a mutant coactivator would explain the mechanism of androgen resistance in CAIS or PAIS patients with a normal AR gene. Depending on the mutation, a person with a 46XY karyotype and ACE can have either a male or female phenotype, or may have genitalia that are only partially masculinized. The gonads are testes regardless of phenotype due to the influence of the Y chromosome. A 46XY female, thus, does not have ovaries or a uterus, and can neither contribute an egg towards conception nor gestate a child. Several case studies of fertile 46XY males with ACE have been published, although this group is thought to be a minority. Additionally, some infertile males with maize have been able to conceive children after increasing their sperm count through the use of supplementary testosterone. A genetic male conceived by a man with ACE would not receive his father's X chromosome, thus would neither inherit nor carry the gene for the syndrome. A genetic female conceived in such a way would receive her father's X chromosome, thus would become a carrier. Genetics Genetic females have two X chromosomes, thus have two AR genes. A mutation in one results in a minimally affected, fertile, female carrier. Some carriers have been noted to have slightly reduced body hair, delayed puberty, and slash or tall stature, presumably due to skewed X inactivation. A female carrier will pass the affected AR gene to her children 50% of the time. If the affected child is a genetic female, she, too, will be a carrier. An affected 46XY child will have ACE. Trinucleotide Satellite Lengths and AR Transcriptional Activity a genetic female with mutations in both AR genes could theoretically result from the union of a fertile man with ACE and a female carrier of the gene, or from de novo mutation. However, given the scarcity of fertile ACE men and low incidence of AR mutation, the chances of this occurrence are small. The phenotype of such an individual is a matter of speculation, as of 2010. No such documented case has been published. AR Mutations Individuals with partial ACE, unlike those with the complete or mild forms, present at birth with ambiguous genitalia, and the decision to raise the child as male or female is often not obvious. Unfortunately, Little information regarding phenotype can be gleaned from precise knowledge of the AR mutation itself, the same AR mutation may cause significant variation in the degree of masculinization in different individuals, even among members of the same family. Exactly what causes this variation is not entirely understood although factors contributing to it could include the lengths of the polyglutamine and polyglycine tracts, sensitivity to and variations in the intrauterine endocrine milieu, the effect of coagulatory proteins active in Sertoli cells, somatic mosaicism, expression of the 5RD2 gene in genital skin fibroblasts, reduced AR transcription and translation from factors other than mutations in the AR coding region, an unidentified coactivator protein, enzyme deficiencies such as 21-hydroxylase deficiency, or other genetic variations such as a mutant steroidogenic factor 1 protein. The degree of variation, however, does not appear to be constant across all AR mutations, and is much more extreme in some. 
Mesense mutations that result in a single amino acid substitution are known to produce the most phenotypic diversity. The effects that androgens have on the human body are not brought about by androgens themselves, but rather are the result of androgens bound to androgen receptors. The androgen receptor mediates the effects of androgens in the human body. Likewise, under normal circumstances, the androgen receptor itself is inactive in the cell until androgen binding occurs. Other Causes The following series of steps illustrates how androgens and the androgen receptor work together to produce androgenic effects. In this way, androgens bound to androgen receptors regulate the expression of target genes, thus produce androgenic effects. Theoretically, certain mutant androgen receptors can function without androgens, in vitro studies have demonstrated that a mutant androgen receptor protein can induce transcription in the absence of androgen if its steroid binding domain is deleted. Conversely, the steroid binding domain may act to repress the AR transactivation domain, perhaps due to the AR's unliganded conformation. Human embryos develop similarly for the first six weeks, regardless of genetic sex, the only way to tell the difference between 46XX or 46XY embryos during this time period is to look for bar bodies or a Y chromosome. The gonads begin as bulges of tissue called the genital ridges at the back of the abdominal cavity, near the midline. By the fifth week, the genital ridges differentiate into an outer cortex and an inner medulla, and are called indifferent gonads. By the sixth week, the indifferent gonads begin to differentiate according to genetic sex. If the karyotype is 46XY, testes develop due to the influence of the Y chromosome. SSRY gene This process does not require the presence of androgen nor a functional androgen receptor. Until around the seventh week of development, the embryo has indifferent sex accessory ducts, which consist of two pairs of ducts, the M. Lyrian ducts and the Wolffian ducts. Sir Tolly cells within the testes secrete anti-M. Lyrian hormone around this time to suppress the development of the M. Lyrian ducts and cause their degeneration. Without this anti-M, Lyrian hormone, the M, Lyrian ducts develop into the female internal genitalia. Unlike the M, Lyrian ducts, the Wolffian ducts will not continue to develop by default. In the presence of testosterone and functional androgen receptors, the Wolffian ducts develop into the epididymides, vasa differentia, and seminal vesicles. If the testes fail to secrete testosterone, or the androgen receptors do not function properly, the Wolffian ducts degenerate. XY karyotype Masculinization of the male external genitalia, as well as the prostate, are dependent on the androgen dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone is converted into dihydrotestosterone by the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. If this enzyme is absent or deficient, then dihydrotestosterone is not created, and the external male genitalia do not develop properly. As is the case with the internal male genitalia, a functional androgen receptor is needed for dihydrotestosterone to regulate the transcription of target genes involved in development. XX karyotype Mutations in the androgen receptor gene can cause problems with any of the steps involved in androgenization, from the synthesis of the androgen receptor protein itself, through the transcriptional ability of the dimerized, Androgen AR complex. ACE can result if even one of these steps is significantly disrupted, 
as each step is required for androgens to activate the AR successfully and regulate gene expression. Exactly which steps a particular mutation will impair can be predicted, to some extent, by identifying the area of the AR in which the mutation resides. This predictive ability is primarily retrospective in origin, the different functional domains of the AR gene have been elucidated by analyzing the effects of specific mutations in different regions of the AR. For example, mutations in the steroid binding domain have been known to affect androgen binding affinity or retention, mutations in the hinge region have been known to affect nuclear translocation, Mutations in the DNA binding domain have been known to affect dimerization and binding to target DNA, and mutations in the transactivation domain have been known to affect target gene transcription regulation. Unfortunately, even when the affected functional domain is known, predicting the phenotypical consequences of a particular mutation is difficult. Some mutations can adversely impact more than one functional domain. For example, a mutation in one functional domain can have deleterious effects on another by altering the way in which the domains interact. A single mutation can affect all downstream functional domains if a premature stop codon or framing error results, such a mutation can result in a completely unusable androgen receptor protein. The steroid binding domain is particularly vulnerable to the effects of a premature stop codon or framing error, since it occurs at the end of the gene, and its information is thus more likely to be truncated or misinterpreted than other functional domains. Other, more complex relationships have been observed as a consequence of mutated AR. Some mutations associated with male phenotypes have been linked to male breast cancer, prostate cancer, or in the case of spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy, disease of the central nervous system. The form of breast cancer seen in some men with PES is caused by a mutation in the AR's DNA binding domain. This mutation is thought to cause a disturbance of the AR's target gene interaction that allows it to act at certain additional targets, possibly in conjunction with the estrogen receptor protein, to cause cancerous growth. The pathogenesis of spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy demonstrates that even the mutant AR protein itself can result in pathology. The trinucleotide repeat expansion of the polyglutamine tract of the AR gene that is associated with SBMA results in the synthesis of a misfolded AR protein that the cell fails to proteolize and disperse properly. These misfolded AR proteins form aggregates in the cell cytoplasm and nucleus. Over the course of 30 to 50 years, these aggregates accumulate and have a cytotoxic effect eventually resulting in the neurodegenerative symptoms associated with SBMA. The phenotypes that result from the insensitivity to androgens are not unique to ACE, thus the diagnosis of ACE requires thorough exclusion of other causes. Clinical findings indicative of ACE include the presence of a short vagina or undermasculinized genitalia, partial or complete regression of M. Lyrian structures, bilateral nondysplastic testes, and impaired spermatogenesis and slash or virilization. Laboratory findings include a 46XY karyotype and normal or elevated postpubertal testosterone, luteinizing hormone, and estradiol levels. The androgen binding activity of genital skin fibroblasts is typically diminished although exceptions have been reported. Conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone may be impaired. The diagnosis of ACE is confirmed if androgen receptor gene sequencing reveals a mutation, although not all individuals with ACE will have an AR mutation. Correlation of Genotype and Phenotype Pathophysiology Androgens and the androgen receptor 
androgens in fetal development. Each of the three types of ACE has a different list of differential diagnoses to consider. Depending on the form of ACE suspected, the list of differentials can include Management of ACE is currently limited to symptomatic management, no method is currently available to correct the malfunctioning androgen receptor proteins produced by AR gene mutations. Areas of management include sex assignment, genitoplasty, gonadectomy in relation to tumor risk, hormone replacement therapy, genetic counseling, and psychological counseling. Estimates for the incidence of androgen insensitivity syndrome are based on a relatively small population size, thus are known to be imprecise. CAIS is estimated to occur in one of every 20,446 XY births. A nationwide survey in the Netherlands based on patients with genetic confirmation of the diagnosis estimates that the minimal incidence of CAIS is 1 in 99,000. The incidence of PAIS is estimated to be 1 in 130,000. Due to its subtle presentation, Maze is not typically investigated except in the case of male infertility, thus its true prevalence is unknown. Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis refers to genetic profiling of embryos prior to implantation, and sometimes even of oocytes prior to fertilization. When used to screen for a specific genetic sequence, its main advantage is that it avoids selective pregnancy termination as the method makes it highly likely that a selected embryo will be free of the condition under consideration. In the UK, ACE appears on a list of serious genetic diseases that may be screened for via PGD. Some ethicists, clinicians and intersex advocates have argued that screening embryos to specifically exclude intersex traits are based on social and cultural norms as opposed to medical necessity. Recorded descriptions of the effects of ACE date back hundreds of years, although significant understanding of its underlying histopathology did not occur until the 1950s. The taxonomy and nomenclature associated with androgen insensitivity went through a significant evolution that paralleled this understanding. The first descriptions of the effects of ACE appeared in the medical literature as individual case reports or as part of a comprehensive description of intersex physicalities. In 1839, Scottish obstetrician Sir James Young Simpson published one such description in an exhaustive study of intersexuality that has been credited with advancing the medical community's understanding of the subject. Simpson's system of taxonomy, however, was far from the first, taxonomies or descriptions for the classification of intersexuality were developed by Italian physician and physicist Fortune. Affidity in 1549, French surgeon Ambroise Par. In 1573, French physician and sexology pioneer Nicolas Vanette in 1687, and French zoologist Isidore Geoffroy St. Hilaire in 1832. All five of these authors used the colloquial term hermaphrodite as the foundation of their taxonomies, although Simpson himself questioned the propriety of the word in his publication. Use of the word hermaphrodite in the medical literature has persisted to this day, although its propriety is still in question. An alternative system of nomenclature has been recently suggested, but the subject of exactly which word or words should be used in its place still one of much debate. Pathogenesis of ACE Pseudohermaphroditism has, until very recently, been the term used in the medical literature to describe the condition of an individual whose gonads and karyotype do not match the external genitalia in the gender binary sense. For example, 
46XY individuals who have a female phenotype, but also have testes instead of ovaries. A group that includes all individuals with CAIS, as well as some individuals with PACE, are classified as having male pseudohermaphroditism, while individuals with both an ovary and a testis are classified as having true hermaphroditism. Use of the word in the medical literature antedates the discovery of the chromosome, thus its definition has not always taken karyotype into account when determining an individual's sex. Previous definitions of pseudohermaphroditism relied on perceived inconsistencies between the internal and external organs, the true sex of an individual was determined by the internal organs and the external organs determined the perceived sex of an individual. German-Swiss pathologist Edwin Klebs is sometimes noted for using the word pseudohermaphroditism in his taxonomy of intersexuality in 1876, although the word is clearly not his invention as is sometimes reported. The history of the word pseudohermaphrodite and the corresponding desire to separate true hermaphrodites from false, spurious, or pseudohermaphrodites, dates back to at least 1709, when Dutch anatomist Frederick Royce used it in a publication describing a subject with testes and a mostly female phenotype. Pseudohermaphrodite also appeared in the Acta Eruditorum later that same year, in a review of Royce's work. Also some evidence indicates the word was already being used by the German and French medical community long before Klebs used it, German physiologist Johannes Peter M. Ler equated pseudohermaphroditism with a subclass of hermaphroditism from St. Hilaire's taxonomy in a publication dated 1834, and by the 1840s pseudohermaphroditism was appearing in several French and German publications, including dictionaries. In 1953, American gynecologist John Morris provided the first full description of what he called testicular feminization syndrome based on 82 cases compiled from the medical literature, including two of his own patients. The term testicular feminization was coined to reflect Morris' observation that the testicles in these patients produced a hormone that had a feminizing effect on the body a phenomenon now understood to be due to the inaction of androgens, and subsequent aromatization of testosterone into estrogen. A few years before Morris published his landmark paper, Lawson Wilkins had shown through his own experiments that unresponsiveness of the target cell to the action of androgenic hormones was a cause of male pseudohermaphroditism. Wilkins' work which clearly demonstrated the lack of a therapeutic effect when 46XY women were treated with androgens, caused a gradual shift in nomenclature from testicular feminization to androgen resistance. Diagnosis CAIS PACE A distinct name has been given to many of the various presentations of ACE such as Riefenstein syndrome, Goldberg-Maxwell syndrome, Morris syndrome, Gilbert Dreyfus syndrome, Lubes syndrome, incomplete testicular feminization, Rosewater syndrome, and Amon syndrome. Since it was not understood that these different presentations were all caused by the same set of mutations in the androgen receptor gene, a unique name was given to each new combination of symptoms, resulting in a complicated stratification of seemingly disparate disorders. Over the last 60 years, as reports of strikingly different phenotypes were reported to occur even among members of the same family, and as steady progress was made towards the understanding of the underlying molecular pathogenesis of ACE, these disorders were found to be different phenotypic expressions of one syndrome caused by molecular defects in the androgen receptor gene. 
ACE is now the accepted terminology for the syndromes resulting from unresponsiveness of the target cell to the action of androgenic hormones. CAIS encompasses the phenotypes previously described by testicular feminization, Morris syndrome, and Goldberg-Maxwell syndrome. PAIS includes Riefenstein syndrome, Gilbert-Dreyfus syndrome, Lube syndrome, incomplete testicular feminization, and Rosewater syndrome, and MAIS includes Amons syndrome. The more virilized phenotypes of ACE have sometimes been described as under-virilized male syndrome, infertile male syndrome, under-virilized fertile male syndrome, etc., before evidence was reported that these conditions were caused by mutations in the AR gene. These diagnoses were used to describe a variety of mild defects in virilization, as a result, the phenotypes of some men who have been diagnosed as such are better described by PACE, while others are better described by MACE. In the film Orchids, My Intersex Adventure, Phoebe Hart and her sister Bonnie Hart, both women with CAIS, documented their exploration of ACE and other intersex issues. Maze Recording artist Dalia is a Hispanic-American activist who is public about her CAIS. She has given interviews about her condition and founded Girl Comet, a non-profit diversity awareness and inspiration initiative. In 2017, Fashion model Han Gabby Odile disclosed that she was born with the intersex trait androgen insensitivity syndrome. As a child, she underwent medical procedures relating to her condition, which she said took place without her OR her parents' informed consent. She was told about her intersex condition weeks before beginning her modeling career. In the 1991 Japanese horror novel Ring, by Koji Suzuki, the central antagonist Seideko has this syndrome. In Season 2, Episode 13 of the TV series House, the main patient's cancerous testicle is mistaken for an ovary due to the patient's undiscovered CAIS. In Season 2 of the MTV series Faking It, a character has Ace. Management CAIS 2 PACE 2 MAZE 2 Epidemiology Controversy Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis History Timeline of major milestones Early terminology Pseudohermaphroditism Testicular feminization Other names Society and culture Information Patient groups